Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian and in today's video we're diving into the world of Final Fantasy XIV and it is my goal to help teach you and give you the tools that you can use to succeed and improve your overall performance on any job. The goal of this is to help you master any and every job that you want in the world of Final Fantasy XIV, but that does not come without any controversy. We're going to address that controversy right here at the start of this video, but overall, you're gonna find this video as a way to install various tools and to be able to get access to the analytics system that will allow you to really analyze your play style, your dots, your uh, OCDs and GOCDs and obbyoscabadoobadoos. Uh, I stuttered on that and I just decided to kind of continue that trip and fall into it. Guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Brian, like I said, we got a lot to cover. And if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button and checking out other videos. If you're more interested in Final Fantasy content, you can always use the top link in the description of this video to get to the playlist. Now, let's talk about the controversy before I teach you how to break terms of service. That's right. Using a DPS meter is against the terms of service and you can actually see it running up here in the upper left hand corner of my screen. I'll show you how to kind of configure it what you should know, but it isn't about the DPS meter. DPS meters don't tell you if you're a good or bad player. A good or bad player knows if they're a good or bad player because they play to the best of their ability, not to some random number that is essentially being shown up and ranking against others. If you use this tool to be toxic to other people, note that this will get you banned. Do not talk about DPS meters in the game. Uh, however, they are generally well accepted. Also, another theory is that DPS meters make players toxic. And that's not necessarily true. Toxic players are toxic without DPS meters. And essentially what you end up seeing is that it's really more about the player than the number itself. And if you have that mindset, if you go in trying to perfect your performance and have the best performance that you can bring to a party, I think you're gonna have an overall better experience. Good and great raiders ask themselves what they could have done better when things go wrong in a raid as opposed to what somebody else should have been doing. That's my general philosophy for life. I hope you adopt at least a part of it when it comes to your rating and don't let this be something that changes how you play, except for have it change what you're missing and what gaps you can fill with your own personal rotation. So with that out of the way, with that controversy out of the way, hopefully that was very clear and direct. So to get this started right, I use a program called Advanced Combat Tracker or a ACT Act for short. Now I'll include a link to all this in the description of this video. And this is where you're going to have to get started with downloading the application. Now, before we go through the configuration, I wanna show you why I think this analytics tool is key. Now, unfortunately, analytics requires that you parse, analytics requires that you upload and then you can go and review. Now you, if you're on PlayStation, for example, you can always have somebody on PC parse for you and upload the logs so that that way you are actually getting information about your performance as well. So this is a PC requirement, but if you're on PlayStation, you just need to team up with somebody on PC to be able to get this information. Now, this is a log that I actually ran not too long ago. I overall have a decent performance. I definitely am working on getting better, but a big part of this is me and uh, playing around with gear and learning more about how I perform. Now, you see here, I just went ahead and grabbed a 91 ranking parse for a run that I did. And what you do is you copy the URL, you go over to Final Fantasy 14 Analytics and you paste that URL in here. That's how I actually get to my performance log and this is going to give me information. I use this to try and improve and I want to highlight this because generally this felt like a really good run. The more that you do this, you're gonna actually start to feel the things that you do right and the things that you do wrong. But what is really important about this tool is it will actually tell you more things about yourself. Use your offensive OGCDs, your you know, off the global cooldowns, 95.5%, meaning I missed an aside in this case for my white mage. That was extra DPS, especially off the global cooldown that I could use to getting me to 100%. So there's a gap here that I want to, as a player, be working on. Obviously, healing, avoiding overheal. It looks like that I spent a lot of time healing when not necessary. So ultimately, that would be a huge imp uh, performance improvement because that means I could actually be casting and putting out more damage. Keeping my dots up, 97%. This is really good for me, and this is something that I've been working on improving, trying to get that 100% uptime, meaning my uh, dots or whatever my abilities are, are always on. And this works for all the different jobs. So note that I'm just showing you my white mage, but ultimately you have a lot of different choices. 
And then here, always be casting some real key advice here, having something going out, some form of damage, even if I can't, uh, you know, obviously do my more powerful skill, even doing my less powerful skill like D <laughs> Dia uh, is a huge improvement. And that's uh, as I move, I can cast that because it's Instacast. Then it comes into suggestions. You can see some major uh, things that I need to work on. Avoid interrupting my casts, meaning I start casting and move and cancel the cast. This is me working on trying to get better at slide casting. In this case, for this log, I missed 13 casts, uh, approximately 17 seconds of total casting time due to my own interruptions. Obviously, mechanics are things, and they're going to throw them at you, but it's important to know. Uh, it does say avoid refreshing Dia, and essentially that's fine. I don't put too much worry into this unless I am actually like refreshing Dia without when I could be casting Gleam or something like that. And then avoid we uh, weaving more actions than you have time for in a single GCD. So that way I'm not trying to stack two or three things too many. So that's some uh, major areas that I'm working on improving. And then it says, yeah, I should weave into my invention as much as possible and then use temperance to mitigate incoming raid damage and boost the GCD healing potency. So that way I'm not clipping anything to apply it. And the system goes on and on and on. And we can dive more into this, uh, you know, in future videos if you need, especially as we do more analytics on my job. I've been using this tool to refresh my controller guides and finding ways of improving my performance, like going back to the logs themselves. And I'll show you how to get all this configured. You see here, I've got many logs on many different jobs. And overall, like, I could try to keep working to get higher scores, higher scores, higher scores, but not to like lord over. I don't really care about this number at all. What I care about is this number right here. Am I getting 100%? Am I in the greens for my performance and my abilities? And so ultimately, this is actually what is more valuable to me as a player because this means I am bringing everything I can to the party, leaving it on the field, as my dad would say back when I played sports. So you just want to put everything, your best effort out there at all times. The numbers and everything else will handle themselves. Okay, so. Now that we've covered that and why you want to use Final Fantasy XIV Analytics as a tool and what it offers you as a player, uh, we've downloaded and it's, you know, now we can go ahead and configure Advanced Combat Tracker. Here are first things first. I've actually already got it installed, but I wanted to download a fresh copy to highlight this for you. You want to right click and go into Properties and I clicked on the wrong thing. <laughs> you want to right click and go into Properties and you want to say Unblock. This is going to be very important when it comes to running these kind of games or apps or whatever. Just note that it's been uh, downloaded across the internet. You're gonna wanna go ahead and unblock that and allow that to run on your computer. Now, once you have it running, uh, you wanna always kind of right click, especially to start and say run as administrator. Highly recommend uh, making sure that you run programs as administrators when you get that set up and configured. It's gonna prompt you for a default location. Personally speaking, I actually installed Advanced Combat Tracker in my Final Fantasy XIV directory, which would be under your C programs uh, file, Square Enix Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. And you can see here, I made a folder for it called Advanced Combat Tracker. And here is my application that I run that I have pinned up here. The next thing you wanna do is go right click on that and click on properties. And then under compatibility, you're gonna to wanna to say, run this program as an administrator. This is going to help uh, you know, give you options that it's not going to limit you in its security and what it needs to do to have access to your system to be able to gather the logs and more. So just note, that's how I actually have configured ACT to run within Windows. Now from here, you can be here on the main section. Uh, you're gonna go through a standard import and you can actually go ahead and have it do the plugins, but if you don't add the plugins by the default, you know, setup A, B, C, you know, yes, it's walking you through, you can always go to the plugins tab here, click on get plugins, and then you'll see the Final Fantasy 14 and others and overlays and stuff that you can go ahead and download and enable through this application. And you can see here, I've got the Final Fantasy 14 Act plugin and the overlay plugin set up as well. And then you have more settings that you can kind of dive into. This will tell you where your log files are currently tracked. If you want to change that folder, you can do so. This is going to come in handy when you're actually using the Final Fantasy 14 logs, FF logs uploader tool to make sure that you're pulling from the, the correct <laughs> file location. So note, you've got those options here and what you can do there. My process ID is automatic. My parse mode is network and my filter off on IP is default. You might need to create a firewall rule for ACT 
uh, in this case. And so if you need help doing that, again, I think there are more detailed guides on this over at Desperus Final Fantasy 14. Highly encourage you to check out his guide on the subject. I'm hopefully just kind of getting you started uh, in this case. Finally, going over into our overlay plugin, you would come in here and you want to hit new. And here is where you're going to want to install. I use the Karagatu, uh, you know, uh, preset plugin, which is already configured here. So with that set up, I now have this ability to have my my uh, layout here. You can always then go into this system and update your settings and appearance. Like I love how this tool looks. You can have so many, so much flexibility when it comes to your layout and display. So I'm really encouraging you to check out uh, Karagatu. I'm probably butchering the name there as well. Now, overall, like I said, like this is the, it's installed, it's running, it's configured. Here it is in the upper left-hand corner. You can click and drag it and move it around. I keep it up here in the upper left-hand corner because while I'm streaming, my camera hides my, my DPS meter because I'm, again, not using it to try and shame anyone. Okay, so that's part A, right? We've downloaded it, we've installed the application. Uh, there might be additional things that you have to do depending on your system setup. And again, uh, check out Desperus 14 and his guide if you're struggling with getting Ace Combat to work, or you can always ask me in the comments below. Now, the second part of this is the Final Fantasy 14 logs. You're gonna wanna create an account. Uh, this is going to allow you to upload. So when I go here, like I'm already logged in, but this gives me the ability to hit upload a log. You can see here it's automatically defaulting to that folder that I need. And then I can pick on any of the logs that I have. Uh, in this case, this is the last log that I've got. You would select the current load. Uh, you could also say upload a live log, but typically I just kind of do one. You hit go. It's going to process your log and then you're, the system will take over and start reading and processing it. However, that means you need an account. And what helps when you have an account is it helps you if you have your character linked to Final Fantasy Logs in this case. And you can see here, I've got one character linked. If you have more than one character, you can have that. The system doesn't, doesn't really care. And then that way you can kind of keep track and easily access the logs for your character. So how do you import a character? Well, it takes a step. If you're not uh, familiar with Final Fantasy 14, it's going to take a step. It's gonna ask for the URL of your character, and then it's going to want you to put in this code with that URL into the description. So let me go ahead and show you that actually in real time. That Final Fantasy keeps trying to fill in 14.com. And NA would be for me in this case, you would probably want to pick on uh, your own in this regards. So once you've logged into the Lodestone, you can actually go to your character profile and it's going to bring you up to this main page. This is what you're going to want to use to be able to import your character. That's the URL that where your character station. You then want to take this log code, copy that, and then you want to go edit that into your character profile. In this case, I'm going to keep my character profile that way because I've already imported this character, but essentially you would paste that in that character code and then you would hit confirm and confirm again to make sure that it shows up and then you're back on your character profile. With that in, you can actually hit the import button and it will go ahead and import your character as long as there's no issues and the code is correct. Unfortunately, if it does give you issues, it will generate a new code. So you might have to try a few times depending on how fast the systems update on the back end themselves. With your character in, uh, you know, imported and created, you then have the ability to easily pull up your logs and see information as it relates to your character. There's good information here. This is a fun mini game that I like to do to try and push myself to be best. I wanna get into the orange parsing area on my characters for the content that I run and enjoy. And this just gives me added value because I don't really care how other people perform. It's all really about trying to be the very best. But like I said, you can then go take any of the logs from the content you run, paste those into Final Fantasy 14 analytics. And again, all the links will be in the description of this video. And you can start analyzing your performance and the game and awesome developers and awesome community people are going to continue to help and update this to support, to give you the information. So that way you can ideally find where you could improve and work to do that to the point where you'll start to feel those times where you missed an OGCD or you, oh man, you had to move while casting. And so hopefully that is a help to you. And this has been some really good information overall to the game itself. There's so much to unpack in the world of Final Fantasy 14. Honestly, I don't think one video could do it all and not one creator myself could do it all. That's why I really enjoy 
the many content creators here on the platform. Guys, if you have any questions about today's video, if you have any uh, thoughts, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you feel like I earned it and if you feel like this video did a good job, be sure to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and come back and check out any of the other content I have here on the channel. Beyond that, if you guys go feel like going above and beyond, you can always hit that join button here on the channel for a dollar. Thanks to all the members. You can see them up here on the left-hand side of the screen. Or if you don't have that ability to do so, but you do have Amazon Prime, you can always use the, the third link for Twitch in the description. And if you feel like tossing us your Prime sub, that helps and goes out. Uh, it helps us so much. So we do appreciate the free support, the lurk support, the just hanging out and watching us uh, and watching our videos and more. So for Ginger Prime, thank you for watching. My name is Brian. Hopefully you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you in my next video. But until then, take care. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.